Today, I found another opportunity at the dump. This workbench has seen better days, but I think it's got at least another 50 years left in the tank. Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies. My name is Brent, and today I'm going to totally revitalize this bench. This steel workstation says invincible. I don't know about that, but it's solid, it's got character, and I love it. Let's clean it, fix it, paint it, and put it back to use. Alright, let's see what we're dealing with here. The table was covered with dust and grime when I found it. There were a few spots of rust, especially lower down on the legs. The surface of the table had many pits and scratches and gouges. There was also a bit of a wobble to it, but I could see that it was mostly because some bolts hadn't been tightened in a while. For now, I took out the four tiny bolts holding the top to the frame. There were clearly spots for at least eight of these little bolts, so it's always good to see room for improvement. Taking the top off exposed generations of dust. Let's clean that up. People throw away all kinds of good stuff. For better or for worse, I'm always on the lookout. In this case, I was actually looking for a workbench or a sturdy table to put my 3D printer on. So when I saw this at the dump, I laughed with delight and I snatched it right up. There's a whole lot of potential here. If I decide that I don't like the top of this workbench, I could even throw a new shop top on this frame. We'll get to work on the surface in a bit. The frame itself is quite nice. It's a bit lighter than you might expect. The steel is relatively thin gauge, but it's built and braced in a way to make it strong. I did notice that two of the welds had snapped over the years. I'm not going to learn how to weld for this little project, but I think a dollop of 5 minute epoxy and a couple of binder clips will suit our purposes just fine. I've never used paper clips for joining steel framework before, but let's give it a shot and see what happens. There was also some restoration and repair to be done on the work surface of this table. The surface is some kind of plastic or epoxy, and it has a whole bunch of dents and gouges. I went to the hardware store looking for some way to fill those in a little bit. I ended up coming back with this clear two-part epoxy. I wasn't certain whether or not this was the right thing for this purpose, but the epoxy is something that I've been meaning to try as a water effect on my models, so it's a good purchase either way. I mixed up a few dollars worth of that epoxy and spread it on the table. This stuff has a long working time and it flows a bit easier than adhesive epoxies do. By scraping it across the surface, I was able to fill in most of those scars. And now we have to wait a while to see how that epoxy is going to cure. While we wait, I'll say that this is not the first time that I've had the pleasure of freshening up an old workbench. Here are two that I worked on last winter. You can tell from the wear and from the rust that these have seen some hard use and earned their keep over a span of decades. But they're still just as solid and useful as they ever were. Every 50 years or so, it's nice to break these down and clean them up. I find it so invigorating to give pieces like this a fresh coat of paint and bolt them back together nice and snug. In our world of Ikea, Walmart, and particle board, there's just something inspiring about a solid piece of furniture or equipment from the mid-1900s. This stuff wasn't built to be stacked in shelves or to ship for free. This stuff was built to do a job. These two I actually inherited from my grandfather, and now that I've stopped the rust, I have no doubt that they'll last for my whole life as well. Back to business here. After 36 hours, that clear epoxy was rock hard, and it had actually done a really good job of filling in that damage. With my trusty power sander and breathing mask, I gave it a quick pass to smooth it out. The epoxy sanded pretty easily, and 150 grit sandpaper gave it a useful finish. Smooth enough, but I bet the paint will stick to it quite nicely. I really hadn't known what to use to fill in the dozens of dings and scratches and gouges on this plasticky work surface, but I think the epoxy might have been a great call. Once I had it wiped down, you can see how the epoxy healed up those imperfections. I think we're ready to get painting here. I still had some cans of spray paint left over from previous projects, so I used what I had. First, I hit everything with a red oxide primer. Nothing special, just Krylon all-purpose primer. After the primer, I hit the frame and the drawers with Hunter Green. This is Rust-Oleum Protective Enamel with a satin finish. 
It's the same color as I used on the frames of those other two workbenches. Fresh and happy without being tacky. Hopefully this is a timeless look, because I plan on having this furniture around for the next 50 years. As much fun as this project is, I just don't know if I'll get around to painting these again. It's a good thing I really like this shade of green. I did two coats of green, once with the bench right side up, and once with it upside down. I do like to hit the underside of things. Partially this is to protect against rust, and partially it's just a bit of OCD. Either way, if I'm going to paint this thing, I'm going to paint the whole thing. I decided not to make the top green. That's too boring. I really like the look of my benches with the wooden chop tops, so I picked up some brown at the hardware store. This is also Rust-Oleum protective enamel with a satin finish. This line of paints didn't have a ton of options, and I would have preferred something a few shades lighter, but this dark brown isn't bad, and I think it's going to look nice with the hunter green frame. I do have a bit of difficulty spraying wide flat surfaces like this and getting a consistent sheen. Long, smooth passes with a rattle can is what I'm told. Eh, it's okay. Better than what I normally achieve. Anyway, once I have some junk on the workbench, I think it'll look just fine. Okay, it's finally dry. This is exciting. It's time to bolt everything back together. I found some extra bolts and doubled the number of connections between the frame and the tabletop. Then I really cranked down on the bolts that hold the legs in place. We're looking good. The drawer even works. Delightful. Time to put this desk back into use. This Invincible Steel Furniture Company is still in business. The style of their range has certainly changed, but I'm glad that they're still around. I don't know for sure when this desk was manufactured, I'm guessing 60s or 70s, but if someone has a better idea, I'd be curious to hear it. In a way, it doesn't matter when it was built though, because it was built solid. Today, it has just as much functionality as it had on the day that it left the factory. Well-made furniture and equipment can last generations. It just takes a tiny bit of care and love. On the one hand, it makes me sad to see stuff like this end up at the dump. But on the other hand, I know that there are people like us out there willing to scavenge and restore. People like us who get enjoyment out of making old things new again. Always keep your eyes open. If you find somebody discarding a thing that was built to last, well, Consider making it yours and making it shine.